And now, the Mole Mystery Theater. Good evening. This is Jeffrey Barnes welcoming you to the Mole Mystery Theater, the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Tonight's story by Joseph Ruscoe is entitled Triangle of Death. One of your favorite radio stars, Elspeth Eric, will play the leading role of Carol Wade. Carol Wade faces death, but whether it is her husband or her sweetheart who intends to kill her, she doesn't know. Yes, a strange and terrifying dilemma. A triangle of death. And now for tonight's Mole Mystery by Joseph Ruscoe, Triangle of Death. Wins you ten silver dollars. You've changed. How low can a guy get? Now, please, I can explain, but not here. What what do you... Never thought I'd catch up with you, did you? Mrs. Carol Wade. How'd you find out where I live? What are you going to do? What do you deserve? I'm bleeding for you. Got a swan song for a sucker? Now, look, I'm warning you. Get out of here. I'll call my husband. Peter! Peter! (laughs) Call him again. He's not here, Angel. Both of us know it. Why, you... The name's Tony Morell, remember? Let's see, uh... What was yours when I met you down in Miami last year? Uh... Miss Carol Meadows, wasn't it? When your lips took me over the barrel for your gambling debt. I meant to pay you back someday. Yeah, I... that's why you took it on the lamb. You know, it was silly of you to have posed under your maiden name, you little two-timer. I was bound to catch up with you. Who told you? How blind can a guy stay? Even with a crush. Put down that gun, Tony. You'll burn for it. Not me. Two other Tony, guys. Tony, no. Don't. Please. Please. <laughs> Go ahead. Relax. Take a good look at it, pretty face. And thank heaven the torch still burns. What? Because this gun is the only thing that can save you from the undertaker. You gotta kiss it for luck. Like it goes. What are you talking about? Are you crazy? I've elected myself your bodyguard. Said he, examining his head. So stick close to your sucker from here on in, baby, because someone is out to kill you. What? Who? Who? Character I met only an hour ago in a little dive I just opened about 75 miles down the road near Saratoga. Small world, huh? We're neighbors. Hilo Cafe. Did that ring a bell? That was the name of your nightclub in Miami. Yeah, the one you cost me. Oh, stop playing with me. Who was this? This character? Well, in he walks, see, this utter stranger. We're a fast one. And I join him. A few drinks later, he tells me he's a sawbones on a call nearby. And this and that. Doctor, did you say? Yeah. Why so pale, Carol? Anyway, I give him the old wheeze about this one thing a sawbones can't cure a broken heart. Rum chummy, see? So he pumps me with a bedside manner, and I admit that I'm still carrying a torch for a worthless little tramp who played me for a chump last year. A Carol Meadow. Who was he? Stop torturing me. Who was he? You guessed it, your husband, lady. Oh, no, God! Wait. For that slap, I ought to cut off your hands. I mean, I dreamed about him around my neck again. Get out! Get out! How deaf can I get? Okay, you little fool, but you better get out with me. I'm telling you, your life is in danger, understand? He's going to murder you when he comes home for making his rounds. He's got like a wild man. He gave me a blueprint. That's what I've come to warn you. My Peter? Oh, sure. Oh, you cute man, you cute liar. Can't you think up a deafier story to get me back? Now, look, you've got to believe me. Come away from here. You know, that's what I fell for down in Miami. Your deadpan way of telling him tall and windy. Oh, I wasn't kidding, Tony. I was pretty wild about you. But I had enough of men like you when I was in the chorus, so I came to my tent. Look, Carol, I'm telling you... My husband loves me. He wouldn't harm a fly. Now, you get out of here fast. Okay. It's your funeral. 
Oh, by the way, about that murder blueprint. Your husband's coming home early, see? He's going to suggest a little ride in the car for the air. You're not looking so good. He's going to suggest Sunset Cliff. To look at the sunset. He's going to push you off that cliff accidental. How careful can a guy be? Who is it? It's me, Cookie. Oh, you're home early. Yep, no plenty goody today. Is that something? Now I can spend the afternoon with my little wife. <sighs> oh, gosh, it's a rich feeling. Now, come here there, fly to my arms, woman. <laughs> <laughs> Peter. Hmm? Did you stop for a drink or something? Cookie, I'm still drunk with love after three years. Can you beat it? <laughs> yeah, the honeymoon will never be over with us. Bet? Now give me a little ear. Yeah. <laughs> Cookie, where should we go this afternoon? What? Darling, what's the matter? What's wrong? Don't you feel well? You, you're not no, looking at it. No, I feel fine. A... Sure? Yes, yeah, fine. Well, good. Me, I, I'd like to stay home. It's all the same with you. Oh, yes. Let's. <gasps> oh, Peter, I feel so good now. Golly, the silly things that have been upsetting me today. What things? Oh, little trifles around the house, tradesmen, you know. Made you irritable? Yes, that's it. But now my man, he's come home. <laughs> he doctored it all away and it stopped pounding. Pounding? Uh, yes, my headache. Headache? You've had a headache, too? Well, no. You've been outdoors I... at all today. No. Oh, cooped up in here all day. That's bad. Now, there's nothing wrong with you that a little fresh air can't cure. How about a spin in the car? No! Uh, uh, you are irritable. Why not? Why'd you jump so when I suggested I don't know. Just amazing. Now, come on, then. Do as the doctor says. The car's parked in front of the house, and let's go for a little spin. Breathe in the ozone. Aren't you glad to be alive? Where are we going? Oh, for a little drive. What's the diff, Cookie? Peter, where are you taking me? Say, hey, what's gotten into you? What on earth's the matter? Where are you driving to? Well, I don't know yet. Just follow our noses. What's wrong, Cal? Suddenly afraid of accidents? Stop the car! What for? Uh, look, look, there's a, there's a drugstore. I have to, I have to make a phone call. It's important. I forgot it. Please. All right. I'll come in with you. No, no, you you just wait here, Lonnie. Take me a minute. Well, the hustle it took. Yes. yes. Tony, this is Carol. Listen, Tony. Listen, what do I do? I'm frightened to death. Yes, but I haven't got much time. He's waiting for me in the car. Look, I'm in a phone booth, and you were right. He is taking me out for a ride. I just can't believe it. I, I'm all mixed up. I mean, it is just a ride. I did say I had a headache. What if he hasn't got any idea of taking me? What's keeping you, Carol? Who are you phoning? All right, Lola. I'll, I'll try to run up and see you right away. Bye. Lola? Your friend Lola Jennings? Yes. Uh... Look, Peter, uh, if you want to know, that that's why I was so upset today. Oh? Uh, yes, yeah, she phoned me this morning. She's in a bad way about something. I see. I mean, she sounded so desperate, I was worried. Carol, was it really Lola you were just phoning or the Hilo Cafe? What? Well, then he hasn't tried to contact you, and all along I really thought he's the reason you were so upset. Who? Well, it's a good thing I'm in time to warn you. I meant to earlier, but it's, well, it's so frightfully delicate. Warn me about that? About a man who's in town looking for you. A man you seem to have met in Miami last year. Tony Morrell. Tony? Yes, I bumped into him this afternoon in his cafe. It seems he's just opened it, and I happened to drop in for a drink, and he sat down at my booth and introduced himself, and... Well, he got a little plastered, and without knowing who I was at first, he told me... Something about you and him. Peter. Oh, it's all right, Cookie. I know the whole story. He fell in love with you, period. Who wouldn't? No, I... Well, I admit it whammed me at first. Oh, Peter, I, Oh, I'm sure it was just one of those harmless vacation romances, and... Well, the fool read more into it than there was there. Hmm, Of course. 
Oh, honey, absolutely nothing more. I always meant to tell you, but there was really nothing to tell, and telling it would have made it sound like something. Of course, sweet. I know how a thing like that could happen, but... Carol, this Morel fellow seems to have taken it really hard and blubbered all sorts of threats. Threats? Yeah, said he'd be a fool not to get revenge. Said he'd somehow lure you to his cafe where he'd kill you. What? And there's only one way he wants to kill you. With a poison martini. Poison martini? Why? Well, search me. Crazy. He acted like a wild man. Oh, Peter, I'm scared. He just saved me from him. Don't let him come near me. Now, don't worry. If I ever hear of him trying to bother you, I'll strangle him with my bare hands. Yeah. Well, let's get rolling, Carol. Hmm? Put some color in your cheeks. Peter, you've gotten so moody. You really forgive me, or was that all just an act? Or was it just an innocent summer romance? Hmm? Constant Penelope? Do you, Peter, do you? Life is short, isn't it? What? I said life is short. A laugh, a tear, and sunset. Sunset? Of course I forgive you. You're my wife, aren't you? Period. Peter, yeah, where are you driving me? That record again. Just to town and back. What do you keep oh, asking? Town, that's the other way. Huh? What other way? Oh, I... Say, maybe I can be a bit more imaginative than just town and back. Maybe... Maybe we ought to turn around and go the other way at that. What? Yeah, that brings us to Summit Cliff. Summit... And we can go there and watch the sunset. Peter, like no. we used to. Oh, come on. Well, mystery fans, this is Jeffrey Barnes ringing down the curtain on Act One of tonight's Mole Mystery. But stay close by, because I promise you, in Act Two, we'll have you guessing at high speed. You're going to humor me, Carol, if you really love me. What's what's wrong with the cliff, our old haunt? Why act up? Carol! Oh, I would run out of gas and right at the foot of the climb, too. Yeah, lucky, though. There's the filling station. Hey there, gas! Hey, anybody there? Oh, wait here a minute. I'll go around some now. Get in here, quick. Tony. Quick, before he comes out. Well, are you paralyzed? I'm here to save you, you little fool. You want to die? You want me to, Tony. He told me plenty about you. Go away. Quiet. I was right. He is headed for the cliff, isn't he? Yes, but it was common, ordinary sea. Perfectly natural from the conversation. Carol, for... We've often come here to see the sunset plenty of times. Beat it. I don't want him to find you. Still don't trust me. And listen. Something else I remember. Something else he said. He was going to shoot you on the cliff so you wouldn't put up a struggle. And then push you off. What? Okay, you ever known him to carry a gun before? No, never. You want to watch me frisk him? You'll believe me? Oh, go away, please. Here he comes. Okay. How far can you drop? Fill her up, huh? Right, Doc. Girl, who were you talking to just now? Huh? The car that just drew up. Oh, uh, he, he wanted to know where Highway 22 was. Hmm. I see. You got a cigarette, Peter? Sure. No, no, yeah. not that pack. Didn't you have another brand? Hmm? Let me look, darling. Wasn't it in this pocket? What? No. Oh, in this one. Hey, what are you talking about? What <laughs> brand? No, it's not there either. I'm sure I saw you with... <laughs> You're having a good time. Yeah. Now, let's empty all my pockets. I, I like this game. Here. Oh, here. Here. No. No. Here, any more? No. No more? Then how about my undershirt? I don't know what made me think... You haven't got one ever. <laughs> Have you been? Yeah, but you want the strangers. Okay, Doc. Just 14. All right. Here, yeah, keep the chain. Thanks. Right. Now, little wife, let's climb that hill, hmm? And take a look at that sunset. Yes, 
some climb. Almost there now. Peter, it'll never happen again. I know I've wronged you, but I've died a thousand times. Yeah, it's too it. late. The sun's gone down. Well, let's go to the top, anyhow. Peter, please believe it's getting me. Getting dark. If it weren't for that phone call of yours. Listen to me, Peter. Are you are you harboring it against me? Don't be a stuck whistle. How many times do I have to reassure you? I've forgiven you, period. I've even told him that. When he made those threats against your life and called you what he did, though you deserved it, you deserved it here. No. I think I'd have killed him then and there if I were the type that carried a gun. Oh, I wish you were. Murderous snake like Tony. I love you in spite of what you've done. We'll do again. No, I... And I told him that I'm going to court you all over again and start by making the trip this afternoon to Summit Cliff. Oh, then that's how Tony... Yes? Nothing. Oh, wait a minute. You, you didn't know we were coming here. We even started out the other way. <laughs> That's funny. Well, here we are at last. Say, talk about elevation. Just look down there. Does it make you dizzy? Peter, answer me. How could you know Cookie. that... Cookie, we were coming here all the time. I meant to from the first. But you started the other way? Just to throw you off. What? I was playing with you. I had a special reason for bringing you here today. Special reason? Very. What do you suppose I came home early? I... Don't lean against the door. You're just two feet from the edge and it's a 200-foot drop. What was the special reason? This. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a neck. Peter. You know what today is? Now, see if I haven't got a memory oh. like an elephant. Three years to the day that I first told you I loved you. No, you wouldn't remember, but it was right here at Sunset Cliff when we were... Yes, when we were watching our first sunset together. Oh, Peter. <laughs> oh, you great, big, thoughtful old kid. <laughs> I ought to kill you instead. <laughs> oh, it's so lovely. I can't get a good look at it, though. It's gotten so dark. Yeah, here, I'll light a match. No, no, wait a minute. There's a flashlight in the car someplace, isn't there? Yes, you keep in the side packet here. I'll... Oh, Angel. <laughs> the thing that... Ah, give me that. Don't... Give me that don't... and get over. There. I don't want the accident. A gun! You did have a gun all the time! Who want to protect you? You said you never carried one. Where you, you fool? Drop it, Doc. Drop it or I'll thrill you. Oh. Okay, babe, quick. Come back. Get in. Hey, I'll come back here. Tony. Tony. I got his gun. Get yeah. me away. Anywhere away from that monster. He did have a gun. He did have one, just like you said. He was going to shoot me and throw me off the cliff. Ah, not you, sister. Relax. You got nine lives. How many can you burn up? This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of Triangle of Death. Have we shaken him yet? I don't see his car anymore. Oh, he's lost us. He won't drive very fast with a bullet in his hand. Still can't believe he had it in him. Played with me just like a cat with a mouth. Tony, you saved my life. Well, then come here. No, no. But I am grateful, Tony. It's all been like a nightmare all day. Ever since you came in the door, I didn't know who to believe. But now I know he was Shut just up. about. Close your eyes. Kiss me. Mm. Mm. said it. Maybe that doesn't call for a drink, oh, huh? Wonderful. I... Drink. Yeah. You can stop off somewhere. Somewhere? Where? Well, I don't know. How about the High Low Cafe? Why there? I, I mean, why wait till we get there? Well, for sentimental reasons. Remember the High Low in Miami? When you first gave me the eye, Miss Meadows? It cost me my innocence, that shade of mascara. I should forget. Well, let's drink the old times, huh? Why don't we sit out in the booth? Well, my private office is more intimate. Well, it be, Manhattan? Yes, yes. It's all right, make it a Manhattan. Coming up, two Manhattans. I'll get it from the bar. 
Oh, wait. You better make it the drink we last had in Miami. Hmm? You know, the one you slipped something in and lambed it when I passed out. Martinis, wasn't it? Oh. Yeah, I'll fix your martini. Wait here. My, my friend Lola, Lola Jennings, she's, she's terribly ill. Tony, I forgot. I'd better go to her. Not so fast. How about our drinks? How'd you get them so quick? I gave Joe the order when we came in. Here. Take it. No, I'm... I'm... Yeah, take it. Come on, unfreeze. No, I... You didn't need coaxing in Miami. Take. There. Now let's click glasses like we did then. Click. That's it. Now, bottoms up. Drink, come on. Drink. Why are you shaking? No. No? <laughs> so don't. Put it down. What do I lose? I'm on to you. I'm on to you, Tony Morell. Oh, get a load of her. Get out of my way. I'm going to. No, ahead. you don't. Hey. The curtains for you, you nuts. You didn't see his gun? It was meant for you, and you know it. I can see it now. It's Peter I should have listened to. It's you that wants to kill me, and he was trying to save me. Yes, he warned me. Every stop, he said you'd try to get me here to the High Road Cafe. Well, sure, I told him I would, for old time's he sake. He said you'd offer me a martini. I told him that, too. And you'd poison the martini. He's a liar. You fell for that? It's he who's been working overtime to rub you out. He gave me a blueprint. I haven't proved it. Saved your life. You still don't believe me? No. No? Well, by gosh, you will. Put that gun away. You'll believe me if I have to put a slug through that brass heart of yours. Now pick up that glass again. Pick it up. Good. Now put it to your mouth. Put it to your mouth. Drink it. Drink it. Put off those. Every bad is poison pill. Are you? Peter, look out! Thank like heaven I got it. Hell, are you all right? You, you didn't. Yes, yes, I drank it. Need it. Hold on, Cookie. Here, now don't let go. Hold on. I'll fix you an antidote. Oh yeah, here's the antidote. Here, now, quick, drink it. <laughs> now you'll be dead. Uh, Give it 30 seconds. Yeah, what? A martini? No, dear. Watch, I'll finish it. Yeah, see? Uh, Nothing deadlier than an olive. Peter, what if he... The antidote, Cookie? That's too bad you didn't trust your boyfriend. Uh, he was trying so hard to be uh, your guardian angel, Sir Galahad Morrell. <laughs> I stumbled into the perfect ending for the perfect murder. I was hiding outside, and I heard your phone. Uh, 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 by the way, was that really poor Lola Jennings uh, you were phoning again? You know, it's strange, because it's Lola who helped me plan your funeral all along. Cookie, she and I are going to get married. Surprise? The police. The police? They'll find the lady who was poisoned and the man she predicted would do it. Two corpses. No, Doc. Huh. Three corpses. What? Three. <laughs> Tony. You. I'll meet you all at the last stop. How dead can we die? <laughs> And now this is Jeffrey Barnes again, bringing down the final curtain on tonight's mystery theater presentation of Joseph Ruskoll's Triangle of Death. Now this is Dan Seymour again saying good night and asking you to be with us next week at this same time.
Tonight's Mystery Theater presentation, The Triangle of Death by Joseph Rusko, came to you from our Radio City studios in Radio City, New York. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.